Training isn't part of a healthy lifestyle. It is a healthy lifestyle. That's because training operates on the stress recovery adaptation cycle, and the fulcrum of this cycle is recovery. Recovery involves multiple variables, good sleep, active rest, stress reduction, and of course, nutrition. Of all aspects of training, recovery is the one that is most neglected and irregular. I find that this applies particularly to sleep and nutrition. Today, we're going to talk about five rules that will help make eating like the master's athlete you are more achievable, more healthy, and more precise. Hi, I'm Jonathan Sullivan, and welcome back to Gray Steel. Nutrition is critical to our health and fitness goals. Fat loss and muscle gain don't happen in the gym so much as they happen at the kitchen table. Athletes, patients, doctors, and coaches forget this at their peril. Nutrition for the master is a huge topic, far too big for a single video. We're going to discuss five big rules in no particular order for eating better, but of course we could have made it 25 or 50, but these five will get you a long way. Number one, use a nutrition tracker. Multiple studies have made it clear that if you aren't tracking what you eat, you have no idea what's going on with your total caloric intake, not to mention the ratio of macronutrients. In 2018, this is just a ridiculously easy problem to solve. There are a bunch of free nutrition trackers out there. Two of the most popular are MyFitnessPal and Livestrong. I used to use Livestrong, but over time, they made it clear that they didn't value the input of their users, and I'm loving my fitness pal these days. Find a tracker that works for you and set aside a time every day to log your nutrition. You wouldn't think of doing a workout without writing it down, I hope. Why would you not record an equally important determinant of your health and performance? Number two, bring back the lunchbox. I find this to be a real power move. The lunchbox puts a hard physical border around your nutrition intake. It constrains what you eat and how much, and it tends to reinforce other good habits like healthy foods and preparing your own meals. Find your old Scooby-Doo or Johnny Quest lunchbox. Then, while you're having your nice hot breakfast that you cooked for yourself, pack your lunch every day. From then until supper time, the rule is, if it's not in your lunchbox, you don't eat it. And if it is in your lunchbox, you must eat it. By the time you sit down to your evening meal, your lunchbox should be empty and clean, ready for another day of helping you eat healthy. Number three, mostly plants. Yeah, I said it. Your diet should be mostly plants. Not necessarily by caloric content or mass, although that's up to you, but by volume. Your lunchbox should be crammed with fruits, raw vegetables, pickled vegetables, leftover vegetables from yesterday's supper, and whole grain products. The payoff here is in the micronutrients, complex carbohydrates, phytochemicals, pigments, and antioxidants you need to be the healthiest, highest performing athlete you can be. Vegetables are the best way to get fiber. Fruits are the best way to get simple sugars. And brightly colored vegetables are the best way to get the pigments and antioxidants that minimize oxidative damage to cell organelles and membranes. Does this mean I'm abjuring animal protein? Absolutely not. You can make progress as a vegan or a vegetarian, but it's harder. And I'm not going to get into the ethical or environmental dimension. There are points to be made there, but as my friend C.J. Gocher says, you do you. Oh, and if you want to argue about it, go do it somewhere else. We're not going to settle this issue on a YouTube channel. The point is that whether you're a dedicated vegan or a regressive carnivore like me, you need your fruits and vegetables. In terms of the total space taken up by what you eat, they should be the lion's share. Or if you're a vegan, the giraffe share, or whatever. Number four, make your own food. Go to the store, buy fresh ingredients. Get most of your food from the outside edges of the store, where they keep the fresh produce, meat, and dairy. Minimize what you eat out of boxes and cans. Take those fresh ingredients home and make something wonderful. 
Cooking, as far as I'm concerned, is part of the skill set of every self-actualized, complete, and authentic human being. Cooking is cool and artsy-fartsy. Once you've grasped the rudiments, it can be a tremendously satisfying creative outlet. It connects you to your food in a way you can never experience at a restaurant or cafeteria. Making a delicious meal out of fresh ingredients just doesn't take that long, and it's an ability that makes you more useful in general. Finally, and importantly, when you cook your own food, you know what's going into it. Which brings us to number five. Don't eat out so much. Eating out is fun, and fine dining is part of a complete life, but it should be an occasional luxury, not a frequent habit. When you eat out, you don't really know what's going into your food, and logging your intake becomes problematic. How much butter is in that cream sauce exactly? How much oil and cheese in that lasagna? How much salt in that risotto? Good luck getting the chef to tell you. Eating out invites, nay, it mandates going off your nutritional program. And if you go to a restaurant with the idea that you're going to stay within your targets for the day, you're almost certainly kidding yourself. I love fine dining and good food, and even an occasional trip to the hamburger joint or pizza parlor, but it's a special occasion, and I know it comes at a price. Again, there are lots more tips and tricks you can use to make and keep your nutrition on track so you can be stronger, healthier, and happier. I invite you to share your favorite nutrition hacks down below in the doobly-doo. Thanks a lot for watching. Stay strong and stay healthy.